Don't forget to stick around through the end of the video for information on our Arrive Serpentor Arrive giveaway. Knowing that she is an absolute master of disguise, that with a little makeup, masks or prosthetics, wigs and costumes, she dives so deep into any role she's taking on, she all but becomes that person, you might think I'm referring to Meryl Streep. Instead, I am referring to London-born, Cobra-affiliated Dreadnought Zerana. Zerana made her first appearance in both G.I. Joe comic and Real American Hero toy line in 1986, and we got our first animated look at her bright pink shortcut locks in the Arise Serpentor Arise miniseries. Not to be confused with the Arrive Serpentor Arrive figure giveaway currently still running through this channel. Zerana worked with her brothers Zartan and her twin Xandar in the search for adding new dreadnoughts to their team. It's not so much about skill as it is cool style and marketability for a figure. Just ask Thrasher. Zerana becomes an endlessly useful Cobra cohort thanks to her uncanny ability to become unrecognizable and infiltrate the Joe organization and base. You'd almost think G.I. Joe had terrible security protocols, but I'm going to say that she was just that good. Almost too good for her own good, as one of her roles got her too close to Joe codenamed Mainframe, resulting in both growing romantic feelings for each other and seemingly dreaming of a life less complicated. A life perhaps together. Hopefully collectors will get to see a Mainframe in the classified line and display that life less complicated. Until then, we can at least have half of the equation. Hey everyone, my name is Jonathan, aka JK of JK Collection. Remember, I'll be posting new videos almost every day as great new ads arrive. And if that sounds of interest to you, please click that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. Every subscription helps out the channel a lot, and it really does mean a lot to me personally. Now in this episode, we are taking a closer look at the Hasbro 6-inch scale G.I. Joe classified series, Zarana. Hey everyone, welcome back, and here she is, the master of disguise, the dreadnought Zorana herself. I can't tell you how excited I am about this one. This, she is one of my favorite all-time figures uh, from the A Real American Hero line, favorite character. I was over the moon when I heard that they were making this figure uh, and they announced it. And look, here it already is. I thought we were going to have to wait until next year. Now, I know some people have already had their hands on this for weeks. I have no idea how they managed that, but you know what? I got mine, and I am thrilled to share it with you. Right, look, if we look on the back, we've got that mural yet again with all these amazing characters that we already have. And I cannot wait for, you know, the ones that are already announced that are coming. Old cover girl yet again. Uh, let's bring the Wolverine with her. Come on. How about it, Hasbro? Uh, but anyway, all the characters that are coming in the future among the ones that we already have. It's just fantastic. This line just keeps getting better and better. Here are her skills. Look at these high rankings that she's got on these things. And I, I like some of these uh, images. I've noticed that some of them, uh, when I've been looking and taking that time, some of the symbols I can't find on the website. Maybe it needs to be updated, or maybe it has been since the last time I looked. Oh, look at number 48, we're getting up there. And then here's this fun artwork. Almost makes me wish it was windowless packaging yet again, so this, this cool rendition would be stretched out. What a fun, just cartoony, uh, almost uh, anime style of art going on here. It would be cool to see that spread out, but it's so exciting to be able to see this figure. But without further ado, let's bust in and take a closer look at it outside of the package. Okay, so let's hack into that. Get this bottom panel open. And there is our good old Hasbro pamphlet. Ooh, it's got a little crease in it. How fancy. It's eared. And uh, we've got empty box. Cobra logo on the back, of course. And let's pull out all this stuff. Ah, just so many things. Automatically seeing this that just go right back to that old one from the 80s. Uh, 1986 to be exact, right? But uh, I am so excited that... How well they do with this line of honoring the originals while also bringing a little bit more modern twist to them. It's just such an incredible balance. Uh, oh, did you see that? Okay, so that is something uh, definitely to be mindful of. She's lost her, her hair, right? Um, and that was in pulling it out of the plastic, it kind of kind of launched out a little bit. Fortunately, not too far. I think I can reach it. So let me grab that, pardon me for just a moment. Okay, uh, I've got her hair back and we're gonna just pop that on for uh, for decency there. All right, let's take a look at some of these accessories. So first and foremost, one thing that just really uh, 
I was happy to see is this backpack, right? It's not that crazy <laughs> red plastic that it was before, but this looks like that backpack that came with the figure. We've got that slot for something to stick into it. I think I can see maybe what's going in there. Uh, and I look forward to getting to that, but there we go. So very reminiscent of the original one, uh, sculpted in, you know, just this, obviously this brown plastic with good details in it. Uh, some spots that maybe could use some stuff, right? Some little details painted in there for like the snaps or anything like that. But I've noticed, I mean, unless it has a logo or something specific, uh, like another weapon on there, they don't really seem to highlight much on these. It would be cool to see that little bit of extra, you know, where we got the buckles on the backpacks, you know, because they're, they're doing a great job with figures and things having that. Uh, but if we got it on the backpacks, how, what, like, what higher level would that be? Okay. And now I want to take a look at this, right? Look at this thing. It's, 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 it's a blade that is heating up, right? So it's a, it is a hot, like almost machete type blade, but it's got like a, a, a handgun, a, like almost like a, a pistol handle. And that almost looks like it's got a hammer to it. I need to research this thing because this looks fantastic. And I remember seeing it when they announced it and seeing it in the artwork where it's just glowing because it's so hot and it's got all this going on here. It would be great to see some silver or some gray in there to highlight these lines because, you know, clearly there's something going on here to help heat this up, right? This is definitely a sort of a heating element in here going on, but that is fantastic. And I imagine it's probably the thing that goes right there. Would you look at that? And I always wondered what that was and what that was supposed to be. And uh, I'm going to go with, I fully accept that that is what it is, is this goes in here. Maybe it's the pack that does the heating, who knows, but uh, very cool. And uh, of course, he's got a little uh, small dagger blade right here, which, yep, it looks like we've got a holster on the figure for that, just from a quick glance. And then, of course, we've got uh, the, the new translation of the classic weapon. I think we're going to have to switch to manual for this one, and I'm fine with that. So let's... Yeah, let's get that manual focus on there. Okay, so there we go. So the old one was kind of like, a, almost like a whoop, shotgun style. Uh, and this one is more like a, a, a rifle of a version, right? It's got a little handle, a grip here, probably for, uh, to, to be to be steady when using this saw blade. What are we, in Gears of War or something here? Um, but yeah, well just, just fantastic. Excellent sculpting on this. And obviously, you know, you can tell it's, this is new. Right, whether even if it's adapted from something else and added on, it's new for her because it has the blade that is part of Zorana, and it, I like, I appreciate that it's painted silver. The older one, you know, it had like little fan blades coming off of it, but it was still super cool for the time. This is leveling it up. It has the opening on the end for a blast effect, and of course, uh, one of my simple but favorite features, the uh, removable magazine, which just adds even more character to this. It is fantastic. So uh, cast from that gray, that black plastic where it has like the slightly different sheen of the finish. So, I mean, Hey, it could have, could have used a little bit of a dry brush or a wash. Who am I to not say it? All right, let's check out the hair pieces. This is uh, a, a version of the, the retro style, right? So like what the eighties version had that, that crazy, pompadour but still with the side hair available you know a lot of times like a pompadour it's very short on the sides but then up but it definitely has that look going on there uh so it's great that they gave us options right and then we've got the that shortcut more modern uh almost like something you see in the comic lines with her so it's very cool to see that and it changes out so easily so easily uh the, the bald head kind of makes me a little uncomfortable it looks a little weird uh but fortunately it's uh it is a short-lived situation. One thing that I see right here is the sideburns. They do seem to want to flex underneath. So be careful with those, you know, because yes, it is a rubbery plastic and yes, it is very soft and seemingly very forgiving, but I feel like something like that is only forgiving for so long. Uh, but there we go. So we've got that hair on there and just a closer look at this. It's got, uh, so it is the pink, right? Dyed pink, but then we've got blonde showing through and we've got purple underneath. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe she's naturally a, uh, a brunette and she dyes it. So there's a whole lot of dye action going on here. We've got the purple underneath and then the blonde leading into the pink. So 
Definitely some time spent in the chair uh, working on that hairdo. Uh, and some time spent in the chair getting this one to stand up. Right, okay, but enough about the hair. Let's uh, let's move on. Granted, that is a big part of her, her character, right? Whether it's uh, for a costume or not. So the face, very well done. It, it is so exciting to see this one in, in such detail. Uh, and just the character brought out so well. Um, the, the face is done very cleanly. I, I am not seeing any issues uh, in looking at this. It has that realistic face. Even if it's not someone's face, it almost looks like somebody that you knew. The eyebrows are painted very well. The eyes also, like the outline to it, we even have the eye shadow that is a Zorana thing. Lips and teeth, everything painted very well. A little bit of blush on the cheeks. So, I mean, everything is just done nicely. Uh, even the earring painted very cleanly over here on the side. I don't know if you can see that. It, I am curious, is it painted or is it? Yeah, I think it, I think it's painted. It almost looks like it's a, its own little separate piece of plastic that's attached right there. And I'm not sure that it's not. You see that? If we get very close, it almost looks like it's a different type of finish or a different type of plastic. But I digress. It is uh, very well done regardless. I've found no issues on the head. And then turning it side to side, um, as you can see, be careful because the hair is definitely ready to pop off. It's not like a major issue, but if you're pulling on the hair, it'll do it. But the head does turn more easily than the hair removes. And this is side to side head, mostly on its own. The neck is separate from the torso, so it will add a little bit more, but the head is doing most of the work there. Let's see if, oh, see, there we go. I've done it again. I'm gonna put this one down and I'm gonna put this one on. You know what, both of them have that sideburns thing. So you see when you're putting it on, the sideburn is happy to tuck behind the ear so just be mindful of that and make sure you flip them down so they don't get stuck in position. But okay, so uh, hair does pop off pretty easily. So be careful with that. Looking upwards, pretty good, right? That's definitely beyond straightforward. And then down, oh yeah, we've got, uh, she does have chin to chest capability, but it does pop back up just a little bit and the neck does provide some help in there. So it looks like we've got a maybe a ball, uh, the double ball, the dumbbell, barbell, whatever you want to call it, up in there. So it doesn't have that extra little hinge, uh, but it doesn't really seem to cause any kind of hindrance. And even this back collar and the hair does not seem to cause any issue because the hair has a good flex to it. So, okay, moving on. This does have a good butterfly joint hidden underneath this strap and underneath the shirt over here. So that is excellent to see. That is, that's some good modernization that I'm happy to see uh, going on here, especially with a female figure. You don't see very many with a butterfly joint yet, or at least I haven't. Uh, this piece, the, the shoulder pad is a little flexible. It's fairly well attached, and I think it's kind of just the shape of it, but this part does lift up a little bit, so if you need to raise it, it seems like it will travel up above onto the, the, trap, the trapezius area here, the top of the shoulder, to, to not be a hindrance. Now, one thing that I'm seeing in moving it, it is, the, the bicep tricep does have good rotation, but I'm guessing with the smaller size of the shoulder, maybe the pin's a little small. If I try and move the arm too much and I'm pulling here, it does want to pull free very easily, see? Uh, so, you know, no big deal. That's only because I'm pulling it very heavily, but it's not like a weak joint or anything. It does have excellent rotation. It feels very tight. Uh, and then we have a good double elbow, which is pinless, which is fantastic. It just adds to that realism and that clean look on it and good flexibility, right? So she can scratch behind the ear right there. And uh, we do not have forearm rotation, but we do have wrist rotation and a very little uh, hindrance to the forward backward. There I go. I've popped the arm off yet again. So the forward backwards on this one, and it is a trigger finger ready to hold a weapon. So then, and same thing on this side, uh, the, this shoulder pad, uh, all the, albeit slightly different, doesn't have the spikes on it. It will hit the shirt up here, uh, but not too bad. I mean, even if you don't move it around too much, it doesn't hinder the arm too terribly. It does stop right about here. If you try and go beyond it, that's where the bicep tricep start to, uh, separate. So just be mindful there. Same functionality, same hand, right? So that same weapon holding hand, but this one is an up and down, right? So we've got forward, backward over here, up and down on this side. Uh, mid torso slash lower uh, rib cage, good flexibility there, right? So it definitely moves around. I don't really feel 
there's a there's a, a click right there forward not the best right for for this joint forward is not the greatest uh, but back is pretty good so she will lean back and as you can see very impressive job right here with the uh, the core right the abs coming up and then the uh, the lower that line right there it does not go much you have to actually force it to see beyond that so the sculpting goes as far as it leans back so that is excellent to see uh, especially with this shorter top forward it does not want to move and if you force it you're going to get this gap back here on the back uh, but we do have excellent waist movement because the waist does have the ability to pivot and move around you see so it's not just a, a rotate it actually does shift forward and backwards and it does it very well because it is on a it feels like a ball joint down there uh, and it doesn't really create too bad of a gap like when rotating it right so it was it was done pretty cleanly uh, with this transition and this is uh, rubberized blue uh, plastic and then we've got a little bit of brown paint on there uh, but it doesn't seem like paint rub is going to be too much of an issue even with this cast flesh tone plastic the legs do the good old pull down so we've got a full-on dreadnought split uh, she's very agile very limber so she's got to be able to fit into any role even if it's apparently a gymnast and we have upper thigh rotation uh, which is good and I appreciate that the tear here is not going above this line nor is this pad so you don't have something that randomly breaks if you have to turn it so that's good it kind of helps with that continuity one thing I see here is this slightly different texture or finish than the leg so this might be a reuse from someone and then this is new sculpt or leg for Zorana because I don't remember anybody having the exposed thigh right there okay but we've got a double knee in here uh excellent look at that flexibility look at that arm come flying off okay so I'm, I'm i'm gonna go ahead and say that's a little bit weak joint i hope that that's just for mine um but that flexibility is fantastic that uh she's gonna be careful with that little piece back there and i like that the knee pad comes up and covers a lot of this so it, it just kind of helps mask where that that pinless double knee is and we do have uh boot rotation uh, upper calf like on the boot line it does move this pad with it as you can see so it kind of rotates with it and then of course with the foot we've got a very good backwards very good forwards and good old breaker right so excellent and the boot a lot of times this boot bottom can interfere with foot movement and it doesn't seem to be doing so so and then same thing on the other side all right now that we got that let's take a closer look at paint apps right so not many more from what we've already seen so there were a lot on the head, right, with the hair and whatnot. Uh, but then on the shirt, we've got the silver, which travels around to the back. It looks like there's a little pink showing through as we get over here, but not enough to really be an issue. And also, if you put the backpack on, uh, it's it's going to cover that up. But we do have the brown painted on, looking fairly clean. That line is a little sloppy, but that is very close up. And then the, the, the buckle or this loop right here, uh, silver, seems very well done. Uh, all in all yeah because that even that tiny little bit right there works very well and then coming around to the forward a good texture on this and then these silver buckles are also painted very well and uh, yeah I don't really see too many issues standing out and the zipper painted silver even with that zipper look still coming through so enough silver to not have just massive amounts of pink showing through, but also to still keep that zipper texture. So very cool to see all that. Uh, what this zips to, hey, don't ask me, I guess she tore it off, you know, whatever. It's a zipper that goes up and attaches to nothing. Uh, the rest of it, we've got this chain here on the side and of course the brown belt. Now, when I was looking at this, there's the brown kind of fades, doesn't cover the blue entirely right by this loop and just random spots, but nothing too terrible. The pink on the tears, I think, is very well done. Uh, I don't know if it was intended to match, but it definitely does not. It is definitely a different shade of pink for the tights that she has on underneath. Uh, and maybe that was just to not have these crazy exposed flesh tone thighs. But either way, it, it, it's not a detractor uh, because we have a different shade of pink up here. So it works that she has multiple shades. It's her color. She likes it whatever uh, shade it is, but there is a little bit of blue showing through here with this being that cast blue plastic. And then uh, back here, <laughs> yeah, the spurs showing through. They're, they're, they are also well painted and the brown on the boots down here. So excellent job and the pads on the inside. All in all, fantastic figure. I, 
I could not be more thrilled. I was excited for this to be coming. I was excited that it came out early. Uh, I was excited when I saw that people were getting them and I was like, gosh, I hope I am able to get my hands on one soon. And sure enough, here it is. I'm so excited it came in today. So let's see how she stands up on her own, even with the backpack on. And there we have it. There is Zorana and we will be right back with a 360 view of her. All right, and there she is, the Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified Series Zorana. Uh, excellent figure, definitely pick this one up. I, it, a favorite of mine, if you're thinking about getting it, grab it. The only things I'll throw out there, I did find uh, dealing with those shoulder pads a little bit difficult to get it to tuck up over the trapezius or upper shoulder area to get it to pose and have a higher arm. So an opportunity on that one, but not enough to be a detractor. I think it's an excellent figure. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Hey everyone, we are currently running our Arrive Serpentor Arrive giveaway where we are giving away one Hasbro G.I. Joe classified Serpentor with Air Chariot. All you have to do is comment on this video to be entered to win. Each video during the giveaway period will have a secret keyword shared within the video, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. Because the first person to comment that keyword gets pinned to the top of the comments and gets two entries for that video. A special thank you goes out to all of you for making it possible for us to be able to already start giving back. Well, that about does it. Thank you for checking us out and for joining us on this collecting journey, as always. And remember, we are posting new videos almost daily as new ads and releases come. If we ever do a review of something you're trying to find for yourself, please follow and DM us on Instagram at JKCollectsToys so we can help with the search if we don't already have a way to get one. Also, if you got anything out of today's episode, be sure to subscribe and click that like button so you can stay up to date on any new ones. If you'd like to see some more videos right now, there are a couple of quick links on your screen for you to check out. But no matter what, as always, thank you for taking the time. And remember, we are all in this collecting world together. Let's look out for each other. Thanks.